Well, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. I hope you all are doing, well, doing well. Glory to God. Come on in. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. I know we are online only. Hey, right there. <laughs> you want to come over there? You want to come over there? <laughs> my lovely wife and my, my awesome son. Come on in over here. Say hey, everybody. Come on, everybody. Come on in. Share the broadcast. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My son. He wants them cars. Hallelujah. <laughs> Poo -poo. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> he want to get the car so bad. But anyways, this is my beautiful family. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, baby. Hallelujah. Come on in, everybody. I want to guys give you all an opportunity to get on in here, share the broadcast. I mean, this is definitely one for the season that we are in. Hallelujah. Something that's been very uh, pressing upon my heart. I want to honor our amazing leaders. Glory to God. Doctors J. Dr. Edith Gregory. No, he wants, yeah, he wants a car that he's not supposed to touch. Now, there's some cars Dr. J has up here that are not for the little man until you get older. Glory to God, because he likes to throw things. Amen. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, come on in, everybody. Get everybody on. Share the broadcast. Y'all know what to do. Amen. I'm going to wait a little bit until, you know, people come in. But I'm excited. I hope you all had a blessed week. If you guys have any testimonies from the goodness of God that you've experienced this last week, uh, go ahead and write it in the chat room because we know that when you testify, it's the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So it's good to release and to share and to show the goodness of God. Amen. So I want you guys to go ahead and take some time out to share the broadcast, to write in the comment section. You know, I want you guys to really be um, like call and response on this broadcast this morning because I want you guys to really uh, take good notes. I want you guys to write down the scriptures that I go to because I'm telling you what I'm about to, what I'm about to talk about today is needed. I know the title says the prerequisite uh, prayer is the prerequisite to power, but really it's the prerequisite period. It's the prerequisite to everything, any and everything you need. You have to have a strong prayer life. Amen. If there's a lack of forward momentum, I don't want to get ahead of myself there. Then it's because of a lack of prayer. But I want you guys to get in this room, share it, get these get these numbers up. Hallelujah. And get others on. Amen. I'm going to send out some invites myself. Glory to God. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Yep, get others in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we honor you. We give you all the praise and honor. I'm so thankful for our leaders, Dr. Jane, Dr. Edie Gregory. We are still celebrating our beautiful and amazing anniversary. 28 years. That's a long time. That's an amazing time. Hallelujah. We want you guys to come on in. I'm telling you, you're going to be blessed. Hallelujah. Share this beautiful broadcast. Get others on. Hallelujah. Glory to God forever. Thank you all for joining us this morning. And I'm excited. I'm excited. I believe God's going to do some amazing things today on the broadcast. Because he's not going to form the time or place. He's not going to form the time or space. But I know he's definitely in this place right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But come on in. 
And I want you guys to testify in the chat room. Hallelujah. Of the goodness of the Lord. Has he done something for you this week that is just, that, that blew your mind? Amen. Hallelujah. But come on in. We will get started here in just a moment. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. Man, we serve an awesome God. Yeah, but we're going to talk about prayer and it being the prerequisite. And you see my shirt. I got this from the prayer marathon. Uh, I went to about a, probably like a month ago or so now, but it says, I am a man of prayer. And I am. That is like, that's how God gives me everything. It's not just one or two things. I get everything because I spend time with the Lord. And so we're going to dive into that. I want to, I want to pray. Hallelujah. I want to pray, have you guys come in and uh, get excited, share the broadcast, testify in the chat room. Something that the Lord has done for you this week. Let's get some, some participation. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Get others on, share the broadcast. But let's pray. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you so much for your wisdom, O oh God, for your power, for your word. Lord, that you, you've given us so much insight, so much mercy, Lord, so much grace. Lord, you've been so good to us. We so appreciate everything you've done for us, O oh God. And we thank you, O oh God, that you're going to continue to do more because that's just your character. You love us. You love us so much that you sent your only begotten son to die for us, Father. And we thank you so much. You desire for our cups to run over. You desire for us to be healed. You desire for us to grow and to mature and to be perfected, oh God. You desire for us to have victory in every area of our lives, oh God. Your desire, oh God, is, is for us to be just perfect in you, Father. In the name of Jesus, your desire is for us to be unified, lacking nothing, oh God. And so, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will release revelation knowledge that will cause your people to go to a higher level of intimacy with you, God. In the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we plead your blood over this broadcast. We plead your blood over your people, oh God. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that we all be blessed by this and that we all would think higher and do better and go deeper, oh God, in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, bless our leaders. Bless Drs. J and Dr. Edie Gregory, oh God. Lord, we just pray, God, that you just give them a special, just a blessing today, Father. Just touch them in a special way. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you so much for your love, your kindness, your mercy, and your grace. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Beautiful testimonies. Yes, my sister, Kaneem. Yes, talking about you've been increasing your time with God and you really felt it in your spirit. And it shows in my days. That's good. Yes, that's good. Minister Angela, you said that you all, you know, you made a payment for services and it wasn't easy, but it was the right thing to do. And immediately after the payment, I opened the mail and received a check unexpectedly. Glory to God. That was more than twice the amount you paid for the services. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. See, that's what I'm talking about. Those are so encouraging. I want to encourage everyone else as well to begin to write testimonies in the uh, in the chat right now just to encourage someone that God is faithful God is there because I'm telling you sometimes you may be worrying about something in the area but somebody already has victory in the area and when that person has victory in that area begins to share what they went through and how God has given them you know victory and they conquered this thing it'll cause that person who was worrying to believe again Amen. So I'm telling you, I want you guys to testify just for like the next few minutes. You know, just just in the chat room. I want you guys to have a testimony service. Thank you. Uh, hallelujah. Minister Angela 
and Sister Kaneen for testifying. Anyone else wants to testify, please go ahead. Um, because today I'm telling you, I'm going to talk about prayer, how it, how it's, how it is the prerequisite. You know, I know I put for power, but really it's the prerequisite period. That's really the, 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 uh, the title that the Lord gave me. It's how prayer is literally the answer. It's the prerequisite. A prerequisite is the beginning of a thing. Like there's steps until you get to a conclusion. Those steps are called prerequisites. So in order to get to the conclusion that's desired, there's always prerequisites before the conclusion. Amen. And so I want to I want to show you different situations and different scriptures in the Bible and give you some testimonies about how prayer is prayer is the key. Prayer literally changes everything. Prayer doesn't just change some things. Prayer changes everything, especially when you have a revelation of what prayer really is. We have a revelation on the power of communicating with God. We know that even in a relationship, communication will cause a relationship to go to another level. It, it takes out um, confusion. It destroys what ifs because communication, if you communicate your heart, you're going to understand what's going on in that moment or in that relationship or in that scenario. You see what I'm saying? So communication is key. And that's what prayer is. Prayer is not a monologue. When you begin to understand who God truly is, you're not just talking to the universe. You're talking to a person that likes to speak back because the Bible says as we draw near to God, he does what? He draws near to us. So it's a it's a give give relationship. You see what I'm saying? When you obey God, he just oh my goodness, he just gives you so much more. That's why obedience is better than sacrifice. I'm telling you guys, come in, share the broadcast. We're going to dive into some scripture here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want you guys to continue to testify because I know God has done some very powerful and amazing things in your lives. And I want others to see what God is doing. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, everyone. I want you guys to, uh, I have a lot of scriptures. I want you guys to write them in the chat room. Because I'm telling you, this is one of those, those words that the devil really wants you to be uh, distracted by. Because the first thing the enemy does, and this is in any war scenario, naturally or physically, they cut off the communication. Because if you lose your communication from the command tower, you're not going to know what, what's going on on the other side. You see what I'm saying? So they can cut off communication. You've lost the war. If, if the devil can get you to stop praying. You he, he's won because that's how we receive instructions on where to go, on how to handle the thing, to get wisdom. If you do not have a, a strong prayer life, you won't win a lot. of You won't win a lot of battles. I'm telling you right now, because God releases wisdom. He releases strategy. Amen. Hallelujah. So turn with me. To First Chronicles. Hallelujah. <laughs> to First Chronicles. Chapter 16. Verse 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this verse says, I'm going to read out of King James. I'm going to be going back and forth from King James to New Living Translation. Uh, verse 11 says this, 1 Chronicles 16, verse 11 reads this. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. That is a commandment, right? Seeking him is a form of, of pursuit, which is a form of prayer, right? It's a form of communication. Seeking the Lord and praying is it's all in the same category. But it says, seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. The thing is, you need to study the word of God. And you will learn God's ways and what he's done, because he's the same yesterday, today and forever. So you see the things that he moved upon. He would do. He would move upon your life the same way. 
You see what I'm saying? So then you can pray effectively. Because a lot of times people may pray, but they don't know how to pray. So they feel like what they're praying isn't effective because there's not a revelation when they pray. They pray fictitious things. If you, if you have a revelation of who God is, you can pray with accuracy. It's all about being a sniper in the spirit. You want to be a sharpshooter. You don't want to just be somebody just, that just shoots off the hip. You need to hit your target. And you hit your target through studying who God is. Because I'm telling you, just like you, like say you like tea, but if somebody bring you coffee, what, what, what is that going to do? You're not even going to drink it. You see what I'm saying? If you like strawberries, not grapes, you, you know what I'm saying? You have to learn who God is, what he likes, and, and then move accordingly. You have to learn his language of love. We all have a love language. Some may be affection. Some may be touch. Some may be quality time. You see what I'm saying? But when you're not given what you actually are able to respond to, then it's hard for you to come out of your shell. You see what I'm saying? It's hard for you to advance a relationship if somebody's always making you do what they think you want to do. Are they putting you in a box or a misunderstanding when you're not even like what, what their mind thinks you are? We do that with God all the time. We say, no, we're going to pray for this. Like I know people have prayed for people to die. God ain't listening to that foolishness. Jesus came to save. He even rebuked the disciples when he was like, should we call fire down? He said, no. <laughs> Not saying they didn't have the ability to do so. The disciples, they walked in power. But the thing is, it's not, a, it's not a time to kill. It's a time to save. The world needs salvation. You see what I'm saying? The world needs, it's, it's the end result is heaven. We want to take people to heaven, get their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. And so we, we think God is a genie of the Lamb. So if we don't study, we can't even pray adequately. So you need to seek him in scripture. Learn who he is. Study his marvels, his wonders. Man, God, you know, you, and then you begin to pray, Father, you, you're the God that delivered the, the Israelites from Egypt. That you were a pillar of fire by night and a, cloud, a pillar of cloud by day. You're a mighty God. Then you begin to have honor and understanding and reverence who you're praying to. And honor unlocks treasure. You see what I'm saying? So as you honor God, the heavens will open up. As you reverence God, the heavens will open up. And he will release power, a magnanimous thing upon your life. Amen. But you need a revelation. What's revelation? Revelation is simply turning the light on. It's an illumination. And once a revelation is lit up in your life, you will never be dark in that area again. And now you live by that revelation. It's like once you learn how to do a thing, you don't forget it. This, that's why they say it's like riding a bike. You ride a bike, you learn how to ride a bike. You don't really forget that. You see what I'm saying? Unless there's some kind of circumstance, like you bust your head or something. But still, if you, if you learn to drive a car, then you know how to drive a car. I don't get in a car every morning to go to work and be like, man, I... Uh, I got to remember, let me, let me look up a YouTube video on how to drive my car. You've been doing it so, so often because I've studied, I passed a test, and now I have a revelation. And that's what happens. You'll have tests and trials. Tests and trials will help you to be purified and refined by God. Excuse me. And it will cause you to have revelation. So there are things that you are going through that are, that are literally for your good. Because, I mean, I did a whole teaching on testing trials and being refined by fire and the dross and all that stuff. And the thing is, God uses tribulation to purify us. So there are things that some of you are going through or have gone through. And you know, at the end of that, you are better because now I have a revelation. You have a better revelation about yourself, a better revelation about someone else, a, be a better revelation on how to handle certain situations. And I'm telling you, and I bet you, 9 out of 10, you won't go through that thing again. Amen. Because that, that, that test and that trial perfected you. Amen. So as you go through tests and trials, as you study the Lord, you will get a revelation of who he is. Amen. Then you begin to see like, okay, I'm praying. I'm, I must be praying something off. Let me study the word and let me do a word search about uh, what I'm praying about. And let me see how God responds to that. I'm telling you, Google is a, is a monster in a good way. Because you can put a word in there and then say, search the Bible, and you can search it. But there's, a, there's thousands of, of different places you can go to, 
um, uh, concordances online. You can go to Bible Gateway and type a word in and you can read every scripture that deals with what you're praying to God for. And you can learn how he deals with that thing. Now, we know when it comes to healing, Jesus desires for us to be healed. Right. Because we know by stripes we are healed. But if you never had a revelation of what Jesus did on the cross, it would be hard for you to receive your miracle. So it takes a revelation to pray accurately. So when I pray for somebody that's sick, I know Jesus paid a hefty price. He came in this realm. It said he was slain before the foundation of the world. So there's a supernatural thing that took place before everything was even created. But then he came into this realm and died. That's why I believe in this realm, we're supposed to have life and have it abundantly. That sickness should not have a hold on our body. That health and healing go hand in hand. You see what I'm saying? And so it takes a revelation to know that we're supposed to be healed. We're supposed to walk in divine health. It was predestined, but we have to get a revelation in that. And that and, and that and the enemy, because that's why we're destroyed for lack of knowledge, a lack of knowing. If we don't understand that that healing and deliverance is our portion, the devil will come in and take up habitation where we are ignorant. You see what I'm saying? That's why it's so important in this hour to study because there are things that are going on on huge scales that is really a, 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 a biblical proportion. And we have to study and see how God handles these situations. Amen. Study his marvels. Study his goodness. Study his power and see God do things amazingly in your life. Jeremiah 33. I want you guys to write Jeremiah 33. Verse three in the chat room. So those that are getting on may know where we are. Hallelujah. I'm going to read this out of the King James and the New Living Translation. But the first I'm going to read out of King James. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you so much for your word that brings light, which is revelation. And it brings life through wisdom. Glory to God. Jeremiah 33, verse 3 says this, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things with, with, which thou knowest not. Amen. Let me read our New Living Translation. Verse 3, Ask me, and I will tell you remarkable secrets. You do not know about things to come. So have you ever wondered, like, man, Lord, like, what, what's going to happen? What if, what if I go here? What? What's going to take place if you simply seek him? If you begin to literally ask him, he will begin to reveal mysteries to you. That's prophecy. And it's so amazing because he will actually send a dream. He will send a prophet or he will send a confirmation to you. There's a scripture that says that I'm not about to try to find it now, but I'm telling you, he will answer you. Because it talked about how because the anointing left saw that God would not answer him by by Urim, which is that basically like the Holy Spirit, uh, by prophet or by dream, which means God speaks to us in, in those ways to answer our requests. But if we ask the Lord, he will show us great and mighty things, remarkable things. We can pray if we pray long enough. How can I say it? It's like this. Look, you look at a pool, right? A pool has different depths and say every 10 feet. There's some sort of reward you get. Right. As you go down and dive deeper, deeper into God, deep prize out the deep. Right. And so as you go deeper into the water, you get to 10, you get to 10 feet, you get your goal, you get more air, you get more air to go down even deeper to get a greater reward, to get more understanding. You see what I'm saying? So it's like as you dive deep, you get revelation. That's how it is with the Lord. The more time you spend with God. That's why it says in this season, whatever you've been doing for the Lord, increase it. However long you've been praying, if it's been an hour. Make it two hours. I'm telling you, this is a season where we need revelation. So we're not taking away from the revelation you've already been receiving from the relationship you have already built with the Lord. I'm just telling you, there's a higher place. There's a greater place in God. And so I want to encourage you all to dive deeper into God because there's things he wants to show you. But you have to get to that place in him to receive the information. Amen. I'm going to read it again. Jeremiah 33. I, I feel the Holy Ghost. Ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets. You do not know about things to come. King James says. Hallelujah. Call unto me 
and I will answer thee. So it's a, it's a call and response, right? It's a dialogue. It's not just a monologue. You're not just saying something to the universe. You're talking to a person. So when you begin to understand that God is a person, you will realize that you, that you're talking to another human being. If you say something to me, I'm going to say something back. Not a, he's not, he's not a human being. You're talking to a being of power. You see what I'm saying? But it's like, if, if you realize it's like talking to, uh, um, an actual somebody that's right there in front of you, but you can't see him. When you honor him that way, he will begin to, he will begin to move that way. Be personable with him. Amen. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. God can show you the end time. He can show you when things are going to take place. He can show you when to, to stop working at a certain place. He can show you to, to, to move to this place. You see what I'm saying? Which thou knowest not. He will show you things you just don't know. Amen. It will take humility. It takes humility to honor. So first you got to realize that humility is simply being honest. Because before honor is humility. Excuse me. And so as you humble yourself, it's, e excuse me, it's easier to honor. And you may ask, how can I humble myself? It's literally asking the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you to the truth about yourself. And you taking note of who you are. And you say, Lord, man, I'm really struggling in this area. And just be honest with God. That's humility. That's a sign of humility. It's, Lord, I need your help. I don't understand what I'm reading. I don't even know how to pray. Lord, help me to pray. Help me to study. And then I'm telling you, God will begin to push you. You'll be feeling nudged to go to certain directions. Like, let me go talk to this person. Let me do this. Humility is also asking someone for help other than God. It takes even more humility to talk to another person to say, look, I'm struggling and I need help in this area. Shoot, I don't know how to read. You'll be surprised how many people do not know how to read. And the thing is, there's a pride because they don't want to show, so they just struggle their whole life. If you don't know how to read, just ask somebody. There's probably a million people that would love to help you. You see what I'm saying? Don't think that it's, somebody is always against you. Take a step of faith through humility and, and watch God do marvelous things in your life. Take humility and say, Lord, I don't know how to pray. Somebody teach me how to pray. And watch how many people will help you. Go to your leader. Help me how to pray. And I'm sure they will, they will help you. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4. I'm telling you, humility is the key. Before honor is humility. You can't even honor properly unless you have the right heart of humility. Philippians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Verses 6 through 7. Glory to God. I want you guys to write Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 7. I'm going to do out of the King James first. I pray you all are learning something. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Maybe it's a new living trend. Let me see. I'm gonna read. I want to read one of the versions that are different. This is amazing because <laughs> this is amazing. So this this is how you know you need to actually have a, a a hard Bible because they just changed this, and I'm not gonna get into a bunch of conspiracy stuff, but they just changed this entire, not the whole thing. But they changed the way it's worded. It's worded on my iPad. But thankful to God, we got a bunch of Bibles. Hallelujah! It's good to have a paper Bible as well. I want to read it out of the the proper context. Philippians chapter four. Hallelujah. Verse 6 through 7. Oh no, this is the right version. <laughs> but I'm going to read out the Amplifier. It says, Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Because you know, I know you guys have heard the verse that says, Be anxious for nothing. Right. 
Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, which is a definite request, with thanksgiving continue to make your wants known to God. And God's peace shall be yours. That trans, that tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ and so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is. That peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that's the Amplified Version. The King James says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So the thing is, you ever feel overwhelmed at times? That's called anxiety, you know, and, and, it's, and it, it shows itself in different ways. And so when you feel this overwhelming anxiety or just these like overwhelming mind attacks, God is, God is telling you, do not be, don't be anxious. Don't have anxiety. Because a lot of times when we don't understand the unknown things, we get anxious. We get like, like antsy, right? And so when you get antsy, the Lord is like, relax, right? Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Pray about it. It's something called kinetic energy, right? And it's an energy that you use to transform it to something positive. So it's like, if you're angry, don't use your anger to do something evil. Use that anger in prayer. Use the energy you just received from being angry to pray aggressively. You see what I'm saying? Like me, I don't really get road rage. What I do, I aggressively bless people. <laughs> and so it causes a, a blessing to go forth, but it also causes kind of like a laughter to happen, especially if somebody's with me. Somebody cut me off, I said, oh, bless you. You know, you know what I'm saying? So you aggressively use that anger to bless somebody. You use whatever energy, you transform it into something positive. Amen? And so you don't, want, you don't need to be anxious. I'm telling you, the more you get revelation about who God is and all the promises that he gives to the righteous. What is righteousness? Right, the righteous are just those who obey God. And you can't obey God if you don't know what God is saying. So you must study. You must pray. And when he re releases a, 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 a dialogue to you and he answers your prayers, then you just, uh, just do whatever he tells you to do. I ask God, like, Lord, what shirt you want me to put on? You see what I'm saying? It takes negative and positive energy for a battery to operate in a vehicle or any battery. It takes a negative and a positive energy for you to get momentum. So you're going you're gonna to experience a lot of negative stuff. Why? Because it happens. It's the world. But we must be positive. And our positive outlook and our positive action causes a reaction of forward momentum in our lives. As we turn the other cheek, the negative thing is the person slapping us. The positive thing is we turn the other cheek. And when that happens, God will promote us and push us forward. Amen. I'm telling you, we must learn how to fight properly. But you can't learn nothing if you're not willing to study. If you're not willing to pray, if you're not willing to fast, if you're not willing to consecrate, that's a whole nother level. Each level yields a, a compound reward on a higher level. Each level gives you a denser level of glory, a thicker, more refined level of glory in your life. Studying gives you one level of glory. Then studying while you pray gives you another level of glory. Then studying, praying, and fasting gives you another level of glory. Then studying, praying, and fasting, and consecrating gives you a whole nother level of glory. Then studying, praying, consecrating. Studying, praying, consecrating. Am I missing something? Studying, praying, fasting, and consecrating. And sacrifice gives you even another level of glory. So what is concentration or consecrating looks like? It looks like con it's concentrated. Amen. That's when you, you're like, look, I'm not going to leave my home for 20 days. I'm going to shut up in this place and I'm going to seek God day in and day out. It may just start with like a day because I've been I've been shutting the church for, for days and months before just seeking the Lord. And I had visitations from angels, Jesus, all that stuff. 
I'm telling you, when you seek God like that, things that would take years happen in months or even days. There's a glory when you seek him without distraction. If you have the ability to do so, I'm telling you, you need to seek God like that. Consecration. Because a lot of you, you pray, a lot of you study, a lot of you fast. But when's the last time you consecrated three days to the Lord? Where you like, clear my schedule. I'm going to go on a vacation. I'm telling you, you can do it in a hotel room. You can go to a vacation just by yourself for three days. Ask God for divine timing so that you can really shut your phone off and seek the Lord. Or shut away in a church and seek the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Because there's levels to this. There's levels to seeking God. There's levels to hunger. So the more hungry you are, is determined by how much you actually eat in the kingdom of God. So the more you eat, the more hungry you get. And then God will feed you. So if you go after God relentlessly and ruthlessly by consecrating and then sacrificing, man, there's nothing that will stop you. Hallelujah. We're going to have you, uh, Curtis, just reach out to me in the inbox. And we will see what we can do. Hallelujah. But I want you guys to pray. Even you, Curtis, I want you to listen to what I'm saying. Because I know you're asking for something natural, but I'm telling you, if you begin to do what I'm teaching right now, God will supply all your needs according to his his riches and glory. He will open up doors. I'm telling you, I've been receiving supernatural manifestations and money and doors opening because I have a prayer life. Amen. And so I want you I want you to reach out. I'm going to talk with you and then we'll, we'll figure something out after this. Amen. But I want you guys to write this scripture down. Philippians chapter four, verses six through seven. Amen. I want you to write that, write this scripture down. Hallelujah. And I want you guys to listen to this. And the peace of God, this is verse seven, which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Would keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So there's a peace that comes as you study, as you pray, as you make your request known. Not being anxious. God will give you a peace. And it's a peace that, w- that is a substance. Peace will consume your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Finally, brethren. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think of those things. What is God saying right there? He's saying to think positively, to don't focus on your situation, but he wants you to focus on his goodness. And his power and his might and the testimony of those that God has already helped. Because if he did it for them, he'd do it for you. You see what I'm saying? If he did it for someone else, he would do it for you. He is no respecter of persons. If he's blessed others with abundance, he will bless you as well. But I'm telling you, the one key factor that will cause a blessing not to come into your life. Is a few things. Actually, it's a few things. One is a lack of revelation. Two is your heart. Because God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. He looks at the motive. If your motive is wicked, he is not going to bless you. It doesn't matter what you're doing on the outside. It doesn't matter what you are portraying to other people. It doesn't matter what your mouth is saying. He's looking at the motive of your heart. If you are deceptive, 
and you have a demonic motive, God is not going to bless you. It's as simple as that. What you're going to end up getting is a curse. So you want to get your heart right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to check your heart. What have you born fruit in? This is how you bear fruit. You bear fruit by allowing God to refine your character through prayer. And then he refines it even more through fasting and consecration and supplication and sacrifice. He refines you because that's what he's looking for. He's looking for the enemy to not, to not have no foothold in your life. Because he's not going to bless you for you to be a curse to someone else. Amen. Because sometimes people can't handle money. People like to pray for money a lot. Right. Because it's a misunderstanding of what you really need when God God's name is the father. Father means source. He will give you the end result of the thing you're needing money for, because sometimes we don't qualify for finances, but we but our hearts will qualify for the actual thing we need. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> the love of money is the root of all evil. Which means whatever level of love for money you have, there's a level of evil you would do to obtain it. I've seen, I've seen it happen on many different levels with people around me. When you steward a thing, God will make you rule over a thing. So if you steward where you're working at, whatever job you're at, if you're doing it to the glory of God, that shows God that you are ready to have your own thing. And you will be ruler over money. If you steward the money you have now. God will make you ruler over money. You see what I'm saying? Then money will now, now you're not working for money. Money is now working for you. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. There's a principle to wealth. And the wealthy understand it because they honor money. They may not honor God, but they honor finances and finances work for them. But because there's just level of a poverty mindset in the church, for whatever reason... It causes money not to, 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 it's not currency. It's not flowing in the lives of the saints because of a lack of revelation. When if you realize if you, if you are a king, then you should have a storehouse. You should have wealth. Listen to what I'm saying. Our father in heaven. I'm not going to go deep into this because I don't have time because I don't want to get off. But our father in heaven streets are paved with gold. He says, there are mansions being built for us. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When you steward money, God will make you ruler over money. If you steward your health, God will make you ruler over your health. You will have health. It's stewardship. And so what the flip side of stewardship is um, little foxes. I feel the Holy Ghost. Little foxes can spoil the vineyard or spoil the vine. What does that mean? The small things can ruin a big thing. Just like when you, you can't, dis, you can't despise small beginnings because if God, God is seeing how you handle yourself in a humble way, because God gives more grace to the humble. So stewarding is a humility thing as well. You see that when you study the word of God, this stuff just comes together. Like I, I, I look at things differently and I can see the end of a thing. Even if I wasn't a prophet, because I know the word of God, I can see the end of a thing because the word has a pattern. You see what I'm saying? There's a pattern in the word of God that if you follow it, you can have the same end results. And so that's why the word of God, I believe Peter said it, the word of God is a sure word of prophecy. So that means if it says it in a word and you see the ending of it, then that's the ending. So you must study the word of God. So a, a small thing, if you steward it properly, can lead to major developments. But if you don't honor small things, the small thing can destroy a major development. You see what I'm saying? The, the, I mean, I, I think it dealt with Samson where they had put uh, fire on the little fox's tails and it destroyed all the, uh, the whole harvest. Amen. So I'm telling you these things, stewardship, studying the word of God, praying, praying the will of God, which I'm going to get into the scripture about that in a moment. 
That's how you benefit in the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. First John chapter five. I pray you all are learning something. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, we love you so much. Hallelujah. First John chapter five, verse 14. I want you guys to write first John chapter five, verse 14 and 15 in the chat room. Listen to this. This is so amazing. Like, I'm so amazed by the word of God. Like anybody says that Christianity is boring. It's because they born and they don't have a revelation on who God is. Like the world, like they have some group called uh, Middle Finger to the Christians, the in world Christianity. I mean, I'm like, that's 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 comical because you all are going to wish at the end of your life because that one, I'm telling you, my, my good friend, he's literally one of my best friends, Prophet Rob Pickens. He might even hop on in a minute. Prophet Rob Pickens. He had a he had a powerful encounter, visitation, out of body experience when God took him to heaven. Right. And when he was in heaven, he was in the, he was in the, he was at the weight, the, the great white throne room judgment and it was a super long line and people were getting judged and and he was hearing people's judgments and then like this door will open up and people get sucked into hell one of them was a facebook post this girl did and it caused hundreds of thousands of people to turn from god and he said and god said because of that because you did not, or because you did what you did and caused all these people to go to hell and turn from me, that's where you're going as well. Off of a Facebook post. Because whatever we do affects everybody around us. The more we pray, the glory that God rests upon our life will affect those around us positively. The more we don't pray, the more we just do whatever we want to do is going to affect those around us as well. Because there are people that God has assigned to be around our lives that need to see the light. Because when we get revelation, it's illumination. You see what I'm saying? And as we illuminate, other people that are in darkness will be drawn to the light. Because in the light, there's warmth. There's warmth. There is a, there's a love that comes with the light. It's like a light bulb. If you, the longer it's on, it's, you can't touch it. You see what I'm saying? So the longer you stay on fire for God, the devil can't touch you. I remember God gave me a revelation years ago at a Bible at a Bible study we were having. But I'm telling you, the more you dive into God's presence, that anointing, that oil will come upon your life. Because think about it, oil is flammable. The more oil and anointing you have in life, the more you can cause things to get lit on fire. Hallelujah. You will be lit on fire for God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read 14 again. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. That's why you need to study. I was saying that in the beginning of this, that, look, you have to know the word of God and understand who God is and pray according to his will. He will hear you. I'm telling you, God is not listening to, to ignorant prayers. I say that because, like, we'll pray like, Oh, God, I pray that you will kill so-and-so. Or you will, you will make sure they don't make it to work. God ain't listening to you. He says, pray for those who despitefully use you, which I have that on here as well. You pray for people, even if they curse you, you bless them. You, ha you have to be different. You need to be built different. That's why a lot of you don't need to be watching all that real world or real uh, wives of L.A. or whatever this stuff is called. You don't need to be watching all this reality TV because you know what that's doing? It's, it's preaching to you a false gospel. You thinking what you're supposed to do is react like these, like these people on there and tear the club up and retaliate and, and be your own, you know, be your own vengeance. You, you're not supposed to be like that. You're not supposed to be like the world. The world not even supposed to like you. 15. And if we know that he hears us, Whatsoever we ask, 
We know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. New Living Translation. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. Listen, how do you know what pleases God? Remember I was saying about the coffee and the tea earlier? You literally have to learn what pleases him. And if you know that he, it pleases him for us to be healed and all this other stuff, then you pray according to his will. When you learn his will, you pray according to it. I'm telling you, you will have manifestation. And since we know he hears us, when we make our request. See, when you know the will of God and you pray the will of God, there's an automatic faith and expectancy and knowing that he hears us and that he's going to release that which we need. And since we know he hears us when we make our request, we also know. It says that we know without a shadow of a doubt. That he will give us that. He will give us what we ask for. If you want to have manifestation in your life, you need to, you need to study the word of God. And re, I feel the Holy Ghost. Study the word of God. And know how he responds to certain things. And he will release that which you're asking him for in your life. Just know if you are praying the will of God, it's on its way. If you are praying the will of God, your answer, your need, your manifestation is on its way. I want you to write in the chat room. It's on its way. The answer is on its way. And it will arrive shortly. I feel the Holy Ghost. And it will arrive shortly. Thank you, Jesus. First Timothy chapter two. I can tell the time is running. I feel the Holy Ghost. I want to, I'm going to, I'm going I'm to I'm keep going a little bit longer. First Timothy chapter two. And I thought I wasn't writing as many scriptures as normal, but I have like two whole parables to go over, but I, we're not going to end up doing it. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Chapter two. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. New Living Translation version. Hallelujah. It's on. It's, it's on. I feel that by the Holy Ghost. It's on the way. What you've been seeking God for. It's on its way. Like the angel Gabriel told Daniel, the moment you begin to pray, it was on the way. But there were some things. There was a prince of prince of Persia that delayed it. First Timothy chapter two, verse one. One through four. I urge you, first of all. To pray for all people. I can stop right there. It doesn't matter what this person did to you. Pray. Intercession gives God the legal right to intervene in anyone's situation. As you stand in proxy, God will move upon that person you are, pr you are praying for his behalf. It doesn't matter what they've done. I wonder how many people actually prayed for Osama bin Laden. Because he's just someone who lost his way. He's someone that didn't receive the love of God. He's probably someone who didn't receive enough prayer. There are intercessors called for everyone. That's why sometimes, and I know a lot of you on here have experienced this. You've woken up in the middle of the night and God will tell you to pray for somebody. Has that ever happened to you? A spirit of intercession fall upon you and you wake up or you get up or you see somebody's face before you and you just begin to pray for that person? Uh, Curtis, uh, Full Wiley, you don't have to put that anymore in the chat room. I said reach, reach out to me afterwards. Hallelujah. I don't want people to get distracted from what we're doing. On this live, Amen. Just reach out to me, and we and I would and I would um, I would speak with you, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So you pray. You pray. You pray for everyone. So I know God has woken you up, or has shown you someone's face, and you have literally felt that impression upon your spirit. 
to go pray for them. Or even someone, you can be walking in the mall or wherever, you know, you go now, grocery store, and you see someone. And it's like, mm, hallelujah. You see someone in the, in the grocery store, you're like, man, I just feel I need to pray for them. Sometimes God may say you need to go pray for them now. Other times he can be like, you know, go pray for them in your, in your, you know, in the secret place. But I'm telling you, it's a reason why, because intercession gives God the legal right. Everything is legality. Intercession gives God the legal right to intervene in any situation. Amen. He, it, it, it's, it's, it's a legal thing. So God will move upon somebody and they don't even know why. I'm telling you, I can tell you testimony after testimony. I'm trying to remember this one from this man of God. He's a powerful man of God. I'm trying to remember exactly his name, but I remember his testimony. He was about to, um, shoot, I think it was Bobby Connor, who's a monster in the faith. Like it's somebody that's, a, that's an ox right now um, in, the, in the kingdom. And, but they were going to, yeah, it was definitely Bobby Connor. He was going to, he was like an alcoholic or something. And no, no, it was actually it was somebody else. But this person was going to like either kill themselves or something. But his wife and family were at the church praying. And at the same moment, that person had like an outer body ex uh, ex encounter. And I think believe, believe God took him to heaven. And the Lord showed us some things or whatever. He came back a changed person. But it's because of the intercession. What if they did not take heed to the Holy Ghost? That's why when you feel like, oh man, I think I need to reach out to somebody. You need to go ahead and reach out to that person. You see what I'm saying? You need to reach out to that person because you never know what they're going through. And I've done that. I'm, and I've missed God on that before. And people have died. I'm telling you, it's, it's not a good feeling. I said, dang, I knew I should have reached out to that person. Because sometimes you may have the answer to their dilemma. You may have the gospel, the good news of whatever they're going through to take them out of that demonic place that they may be in. So I pray God makes you more sensitive to his presence. Let's continue. First Timothy chapter two. Hallelujah. Verse one. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede. Look, I didn't even realize. Look, everything I just said is in this chapter. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings. Listen, you have to pray for leadership. You got to pray for presidents. You got to pray for those that are in authority over you at your job. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by good, uh, godliness and dignity. God is telling you right here what needs to take place when you pray for leadership, when you pray for heads of state, when you pray for heads of the country and even other countries, when you really intercede. For them, it says we will live peacefully in quiet lives. So because our lives aren't peaceful and quiet, it's because there is a lack, a lack of intercession. There's a lack of seeking God's face and praying and standing in proxy for leadership. We must pray, not just prophesy. Come on now. We must intercede, not just declare. We need it all. But this is an hour that God is calling forth the intercessors. Those who need to cry out to God. On the behalf of those who don't know how to cry out. You must seek God for those who don't know how to seek God. So that God can move upon their life. And move them into a realm. And move them into a place. And a position that will cause the will of God to come into the earth even sooner. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we hinder God. And we have hindered God. By not moving at the pace he desires for us to move in. For us not interceding and crying out to him and killing our flesh more. We've hindered heaven from invading the earth even more. Hallelujah. Verse three, this good and pleases God, our savior. This pleases the Lord. This good act pleases the Lord who wants everyone. Listen to the heart of God. 
Verse 4, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. So when you say, I'm telling you, in my whole life, I've never said to anyone, go to hell. Why? Because God don't even want people to go to hell. But you may ask, well, why do people go there? They send themselves down there. He already did. He did. Look, I'm telling you, if God doesn't do anything else for us, he did enough by sending Jesus. That's enough. Jesus dying on the cross was enough. But yet he still goes over and above. He still goes over and above to get you, to get me, to get our loved ones, to get our family, to get our enemies. Because his heart, he doesn't want anyone to be lost. And so the more that we intercede, the more that we pray, the more glory that's caked upon our life, we can reach the lost. We can go into the byways and the, and the highways to win the lost. Because God will give us insight. The more strong connection we have with God, the more wisdom we can receive to release power to end wars. I'm telling you, you got to fight the good fight of faith. And how you do that? Through prayer. You got to fight for what you believe in. You got to fight for your loved ones. If you got loved ones that are just going crazy, they're doing all kind of foolishness and doing things that are just detestable. What you need to do, what you need to do is pray for them. Ask the Holy Ghost, Lord, give me a grace to pray. To pray for my loved ones. Excuse me. To pray for everyone. To pray for leaders. To pray for our president. To pray for the president of other nations. Ask God to give you time to pray. If your schedule clears up, that's not always just time for you to just just relax. I believe God has been calling you to prayer. Some of you have a vacation coming up. You got seven days off. Use three of those days to seek God. To seek God for someone else who doesn't know how to seek God. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your hands up. Man, there's so much more. I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to do a part two. For sure. Lord have mercy. There's so much more, uh, so much more revelation. Because the thing is, I can't put everything that I live into one teaching. This really, I mean, I can really stretch this out for hours. Like those who know and, and we have, you know, conversation, our conversations that are always at least three hours. At least three hours. Like that's just, if you don't have at least three hours to talk, then we're not going to, you know, because we revelate. Me and my me and my close friends, we talk for a long time because God is so much revelation and there's so much we don't know. Amen. But I want you to lift your hands up right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Just lift your hands up in your homes. Lord, we honor you. We worship you. We worship you, God. Lord, I pray. Lift your hands up in your homes. Don't worry about what's going on around you unless it's an emergency. But Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray. I pray, God, that a spirit of intercession and a spirit of prayer will fall upon your people right now, oh God. Lord, that they will understand the value in a relationship with you, O oh God. Lord, that they may have a clearer understanding of the power of having relationship and dialogue with you, Father. Lord, I rebuke every distraction. Father, I rebuke every demonic force trying to infiltrate the lives of your people, oh God. Every demonic mind-blinding spirit, every demonic tormenting spirit, every spirit, every demonic spirit that causes unrest, 
every spirit of worry, every spirit of strife and stress. Lord, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. But Father, I pray, God, that you release a spirit of peace, Lord. That you release a spirit of peace, Lord, to consume the homes of your people right now, God. Lord, give them a fire. Could you see the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous of Bethlehem much? So the effectual fiery prayers of, the, of those who obey you availeth. So Lord, we pray, God, that you release fire, that you release obedience, God. That you release fire, oh God. Let the fire of your Holy Ghost be shut up in their bones, oh God. Let the power of intercession consume their lives, oh God. May they have a desire, oh God, to seek your face. To release life. So that the life that's being released will be abundant, oh God. May their cups run it over, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God. May the fire of heaven, Lord God, rest upon your people, Lord. May the fire of heaven, O God, rest in their homes, O God. Lord, may the fire of heaven, O God, put up a barrier of protection that no hurt, harm, or danger will come nigh their dwelling, O God. And Father, I release a blessing upon them, just like you did with the the fish and the bread, O oh God, a, a blessing of multiplication, Lord. For we know, God, you command us to be fruitful and to multiply. So this is your will, Father. So we pray, God, that multiplication will hit people's homes. Multiply their peace, O oh God. Multiply their finances, O oh God. Multiply their understanding and revelation, O oh God. Multiply their wisdom, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let multiplication be their portion. Now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we pray. Oh Lord, we pray, God, that you release your healing power. Lift your hands up in your homes. We pray, God, that you release your healing power, Father. Let your power flow. Let your wind blow, God. Let your glory come down. Father, let there be a stamina, O oh God. Increase. For Lord, you say, He that endures until the end shall be saved, O oh God. Lord, let an endurance, O oh God, hit their homes. Let a stamina, O oh God, hit their prayer lives, O oh God. Let it increase. Let there be an increase of stewardship, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, O oh God. Let them not be slothful. Let them not be lazy, O oh God. Father, we pray, God, for a power. The power to make a difference, O oh God. The power to press in. The power to go deeper, O oh God. The power to get revelation. The power to get um, a manifestation of your, of your will, Father, in their lives. Lord, let them be hungry for the deeper things of God, Lord. No longer just the milk things, the foundational things, Lord. Let the walls be built now. Let the, let the insides be built. Let the roof be put upon the house, oh God. In the name of Jesus, they need to move past just the foundation. For the foundation is good because you need something to, to stand upon. But you don't live on, on, in a house with just a foundation. Catch that revelation. You don't just live on a house that just has only a, a floor. You need the walls. You need to be built up in God. You can't live on just milk alone. You must need the protein of meat, the meat of the word of God. So, Father, we pray, God, for a hunger and thirst after you, God. We pray, God, for a new hunger, oh God. Fresh excitement, oh God. New vigor for you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let there be a fresh outpouring of your spirit upon your people. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let them be marked by you, God. Let them come into a deeper revelation of your love, a deeper revelation of your grace, a deeper revelation of your love. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let there be a spirit of prayer, which is the prerequisite for revival, which is the prerequisite of reformation, which is the prerequisite for healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah. Lord, let us be more sensitive to your presence. Let us be more sensitive to your heart, O oh God. Let us be more sensitive to your will, Father. And let us be bolder and as we walk it out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Get the Lord a shout of praise in your home. Get the Lord some heart and likes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Get the Lord. A shot of praise in your home. Get the Lord a heart and likes. If you are blessed by this teaching. Give it also a share. Share the broadcast on your timelines. Share it with someone that you know can be in a better place and position in their life if they just knew this revelation. And I'm telling you, there is so much more. If I show you, oh my goodness, if I show you my paper, I have at least like 15 more scriptures. And I thought I was going to get through them bad boys. But we're going we're gonna to have to do a part two. Um, I want to invite you all out to Friday Night Fire this, this Friday at 7 p.m., Hallelujah. Oh man, I feel the spirit of the living God. But I want to invite you out on Friday. Uh, it starts at 7 o'clock. We end either, we're going to either end at like 9 or 10, whatever the Lord. We just, you know, there's no limit. It could be even after that. But I want you guys to come out and experience the glory of God. Um, it, the last, uh, the one we did two weeks ago, because every two weeks was so powerful. And I want you guys to come out. Because that's what we do. It's prayer, power, and prophecy. You see what I'm saying? So we, we do it all. We pray. We, we see miracles. We prophesy. And we see the power of God move. But I, if you were blessed by this teaching, I want you to sow into the ministry. Uh, below is uh, how you can do it on the lower third. You can do it through Cash App. Um, you can sow through Cash App. I'm going to put it in the comment section as well. Lord, we thank you so much, God, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise is what we do, Father. We honor you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you so much, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Lord. I'm telling you, it's we're in a we're in a season of prayer, fasting, consecration, supplication. We also have that pinned in the, in the bottom as well. Oh, hallelujah! You can give your tithes and your offering, and we honor Dr. Jane, Dr. Edie Gregory. We thank God. I know that they were probably in the chat as well. I know I saw my mother, but they're probably just watching off the same phone. But I'm saying this is a time. I see God realigning some things because some of us may have gone the wrong way because it looks like it's the right way, but really God is going to perfect some things or realign. Amen. So I'm telling you, this is an hour to really trust God. Stand upon his word and stand upon and fight for what you believe in. There's a lot of wicked things taking place. And uh, I'm definitely going to come back and do a part two of this. I didn't even know I preached as long as I did. But I'm grateful because you guys stayed with me. And I thank you for those who stayed with me. Because a lot of people like to leave <clears throat> during the offering time. <laughs> and this is probably the time I'm going to start prophesying over people and calling names out. Actually, the Lord did just show me there's somebody that has a, a pain in one of their shoulders. I don't know if it's a rotator cup. I don't know, but it, it's almost like uneven. Right now, 
by the spirit of the living God, I know God is healing you. I want you to begin to move that arm. And as you move it, because I see you moving it a few times, your shoulder, the pain is literally leaving your shoulder. Even now I'm praying for my mother's ankle because I know this is something. But I, because I know the will of God, I don't need a word of knowledge if I already know. You see that? I'm not going to fake a word of knowledge. I already know that her ankle is hurting. But I pray right now the will of God is for her to be healed. And I release the power of God upon your ankle right now, mom. For God to heal your ankle in the name of Jesus. There's someone else that's been dealing with back pains. And I want you, if, if you're on the live now, I want you to, to type to me, write to me. There's someone that's been having like back spasms. It's almost like what I see. Like if someone's standing in front of me, it's on this side, the left side. It's on the left side of the back. I see it because God is highlighting it and it's red right next to the spine. It's like I'm looking inside somebody's body and I see their muscles. They're having like muscle spasms. God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. There's someone that their arthritis. I feel it. It's like your hands have really been cramping a lot lately. It's like osteoporosis, arthritic. It's arthritic and osteo more arthritis. But it's like it's really like as of late. And it could be because of the storms. Um, but whatever the case is, God is healing your hands right now. You should feel heat going through your hands. So just begin to stretch forth your hands to the screen. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Begin to stretch forth your hands to the screen right now and watch your hands be made whole and the pain leaving them. Come on, I want you to write to me if this is you. If this is you. Because it could be somebody. Mm. Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost. Stretch forth your hand to the screen and the arthritis will leave. I want you to write. Write to us. If you're not... If you're going to watch this on the replay, write to us. Hallelujah. Lord, just release. Just, just lift your hand. If you have anything that you need the Lord to touch, I just pray right now, Father, that you would touch your people with your love and with your power, with your might. And I rebuke all manner of sickness and all manner of disease right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree, we declare healing be your portion right now. Miracles manifest in your life. In the name of Jesus. I see doors of opportunity. I see doors of businesses. I see doors of uh, entrepreneurship opening up right now for those who need these things. Just receive it. God's not a respecter of person. Even if I'm specifically talking to one person, somebody else can receive it too. Just like I pray for my mother's ankle to be healed. If somebody else has ankle issues, you can say, okay, God did it for them. They can do it for me. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, hallelujah. I can keep going, but I'm not. I'm going to go sit down. <laughs> but thank you all uh, for your love and your, uh, your love offerings and your, your seed sown. Thank you for being with us on this live today. Not only, you know, share your finances, but share a share. Share the broadcast. Comment, like. That helps with the algorithm so more people can see us. So more people can be blessed by these teachings. Uh, you know, if you're just now joining us, I want you guys to go back and watch the replay. Because I'm telling you, this is a message that I was really excited to preach in church. When God started giving me revelation about it. Because the way God does, the way he deals with me, I, I kind of study all the time. Well, it's not kind of. I study all the time I, and all that. So... It doesn't necessarily like, I don't like formulate like a, or whatever. I just have scriptures written down, right? So he'll show me me preaching and I'll kind of listen to what I'm saying. And then I, I get a message from that. Or he'll just speak to me. He speaks to me a different ways. So anyways, it's exciting. I'm excited for what God is about to do in your life. I'm excited for what God is doing in my life. And I'm excited for all of our future. So Dr. Jane and Edie Gregory, they love you so much. Me and my lovely wife and my amazing son, we love you as well. And I'm so excited. We will be back in the church. The power will be back on. Probably, it's probably back on now because we're praying. Because prayer releases power. So it's probably back on now. But we will be in church next week, Sunday. We will see you on the broadcast. Maybe I may finish the part two on Tuesday. I want you guys to join us. It's just on live right now for Tuesday uh, Bible studies. Um, we may go back into the building. We shall see what the Lord wants us to do. Excuse me. But join us. 
follow us on Facebook, like us, share, share our page, follow us on YouTube. We're trying to update it with some more content. We have a lot of content and uh, man, we're excited. Are you excited? Hallelujah. Well, we love you so much. We thank you for being with us and just know God is not playing any defeat. Study the word of God. You will, you will learn his will for your life and you will learn that you always got the victory when you lean on him. Amen. So until next time, love you so much. God bless you. And go pray.